Alright, so in this video we're going to do some of the last big idea that we had um, with looking at two quantitative variables by talking about correlation. We're going to do a little bit of extra stuff in class together next time related to it. But we're going to talk about correlation first. Um, so first let's go ahead and talk symbol just because again I'm getting used to seeing those. Um, so the, the letter R is used to represent when you have a sample correlation. And the Greek letter rho, which is actually the Greek R, even though I don't look like a fancy P, um, is actually the, the population correlation. So as you can kind of guess, we're going to be seeing R because we're just going to generally have a sample. And this is how it will be labeled in our stat crunch output is as an R as well. So looking at how it measures the strength and direction of a linear relationship. So again, that's the very first important thing is when I look at my graph, I need to have that straight line or non-curved looking relationship. Because if it happens to be a curved relationship, correlation is not going to be a measure that I want to look at for. It indicates how close the points are to our predicted line. So going back to what we talked about in our last video of the residuals, it's a measure how close those points are to our line that we had. What we like about correlation is the actual range that it's between. So correlation goes between negative one and positive one. So just have these limits that we're talking about. So if there's a negative relationship, we're going to expect R to be negative. If there's no linear relationship, we're going to expect R to be close to zero. And if there's a positive linear relationship, R is going to be a positive number. So that's a kind of what the sign tells us. So really, the sign for um, correlation tells us the same thing as the sign for slope. So there's nothing new, in a sense, with the sign. What we get that's very different is slope can be any number between negative infinity and positive infinity. There's no limit on what slope can be. And slope is more unit dependent upon what we're measuring. It doesn't really have anything to do with, like a slope of 200 is not a stronger relationship than a slope of 2. It, it's unit dependent. Correlation gets rid of that. So think of correlation as sort of like being our z-score when we're talking about looking at relationships between two quantitative variables. It's a nice standardized way of looking at it. What we do get is this spectrum then between negative 1 and positive 1. So if I get a number that's close to either negative 1 or positive 1, that's going to be a very strong relationship. Whereas if I get something close to 0, that's going to be a very weak relationship that we have. Now very seldom are you going to get ones that are exact, like the negative 1, the 0, or the positive 1 kind of like knowing what that would actually mean. So a negative one or a positive one tells you the same strength, they're just in opposite directions. And so if I were to think about what would a correlation of positive one look like, so suppose this is my line, what my points would be, would be perfectly on my line. I can't really see those very well, so let me do a slightly different color here. So my points would all perfectly fall on that line. That's what a correlation of positive 1 would look like. A correlation of negative 1 would look exactly the same as with a negative slope instead. Now a correlation of exactly 0 basically corresponds to a slope of exactly zero. And what does a slope of exactly zero look like? A nice flat line. That's going to give you a correlation of zero. Now this number, we're not worried about the calculation. It's just going to come from stat crunch. So if we actually go look at some of our output we already had, we already actually have this number in our output. So in our notes on page 7 where we got the slope and the intercept, correlation is just automatically given to us. We don't have to ask anything extra for it. It's already there. So no calculation needed for it. What I want to talk about more is the idea of what it looks like. So what I have for you is the four different plots here. 
And again, I'm going to go to my notes where I can zoom in a little bit better. I don't want to cheat there um, for you all. So let me pull off the blank notes. So here's our four plots that we have. And so it's just kind of going through each and talk about if you expect a positive or a negative correlation for each of them. So looking at this first one, there's a pretty good obvious positive slope, so we're going to get a positive correlation. For B, there's no lines even actually on here, we can see that there's a negative slope, so I'm going to expect a negative correlation. This one kind of still looks to be like a, there's a positive relationship here versus this one doesn't have a straight line relationship. So I can't really say positive or negative. So this one I would actually expect to have a correlation close to zero because there's not a linear relationship with it. So if I look at these four graphs, let's talk about which one has the strongest relationship. Remember, strongest, we're talking about if I put that straight line on there, would have the points closest to that line. So graph A is going to have the strongest correlation. Once that one's done, graph B is actually going to have the next strongest correlation. If you look at the distance between kind of like how wide it is, it's not as wide as this one over here turns out to be. So this might be our next strongest relationship, but will be negative. This one will have a positive relationship, but won't be as strong as graph A or B. And this one I would expect to have a correlation somewhat close to zero. So when I went through and actually got these correlations for these graphs, and I just did it from StatCrunch, graph A here turned out to have a correlation of positive 0.931. Positive like I expected. It's a pretty strong relationship, so it's very close to 1. Graph B here, I said a negative relationship, so I do have a negative correlation with that. Not as strong as graph A, it turned out to have a correlation of negative 0.712, but it's still a pretty good relationship. Graph C had a positive relationship, but it was nowhere near as strong as A or B, so if it's a weaker relationship, it's going to be closer to zero when I look at it. So this one had a correlation of positive 0.48. Three. And finally, graph D, it wouldn't even actually make sense to calculate the correlation here because it's not a linear relationship, but StatCrunch will do what you ask it to do, so it'll still calculate the correlation. This one turned out to be 0 0.032, so very close to zero, like I would expect it to be. Now, just to make sure that this is making sense, I'm going to kind of give you a little multiple choice question. So which of the following correlation is strongest? So here are our options. I could have a correlation, let's say, of 0.732, a correlation of negative 0.816, a correlation of 0.049 and a correlation of negative 1.13. Okay, so which of the following is the strongest correlation? So I'm going to give you a moment to kind of figure out which one you think actually is strongest and why. And then let's talk through eliminating these choices. Okay, hopefully you have an answer. Let's first go back here. Correlations have to be between negative one and a positive one. That one is not even possible, so it's gone. Okay. Next, if I kind of look here, if it's something close to zero, it's a pretty weak relationship. This one's pretty close to zero, so I'm going to eliminate that one. So we're really left between A and B. 
So strength is a measure of magnitude. The sign only tells me if it's positive or negative. So when I'm looking at trying to figure out which one is the strongest, I don't really care about the sign at all. All I care about is kind of whichever one is furthest from zero is the strongest. So which one is furthest from zero? So B would be the strongest of those relationships. Now correlation is sometimes something that's hard for students to grasp. What's nice if you go into StatCrunch, since you should have access anyway, um, there's this applet for regression, and there's this idea by I. And so I just like to randomly generate data, so I say kind of compute here. And this can actually let you play with your line and stuff like that. But then we can also do correlation. So you can also do the correlation by I. And I'll just do randomly generated for this one as well. And so it gives you a plot and you try to guess the correlation. Your goal is to be within 0.1 of the actual correlation. So on this one, it looks like it's somewhat positive. Right, there's kind of a point that stands out here a little bit. And usually what I will find is the correlation is actually stronger than what our eyes want to make it be. So like for example, I'm going to guess 0.6 on this one and check. It says, yay, I'm within 0.1. And I'll show me what the actual correlation is. And then I'm going to reset it. Let's get some twin data points here. And here's another plot. This one's positive. It's definitely stronger than like the last one that we had. So I'm going to put this one at about 0.75, let's say. Let's check. Like, then it gives you a hint if you're off to try a stronger correlation. So what's stronger? Closer to 1. So let's check now. It says, okay, yay, now we're doing a great job. The actual correlation was 0.9. You just click simulate and get a new one. I'm just going to try to simulate until I get a negative one here, more obviously. So here's one that's a little bit more obviously a negative relationship. But they are pretty scattered, so you just make sure you put the negative sign in if you're playing with that one. So I'm going to say this is maybe negative 0.4. Yay, we're within 0.1. Give yeah, the actual one. So then you want, okay, this one's really strong. I have to think about putting that line on there. I mean, I can actually move point. Interesting. Um, so it looks like it's pretty going to be pretty close to negative one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a negative point nine. No, I only have to be within point one of it. So here's our actual correlations are really, really close to that negative one. Let's find one that's a little bit more of a mess. Okay, this one's kind of more of a mess. I could have points sort of all over the place. So this is probably one where a straight line relationship wouldn't even be a good idea because there really doesn't seem to be too much of a pattern here. But my guess is since a lot of the points are kind of down here, that's going to be slightly negative, but not real bad. I'm going to put negative point 0.1. Let's check. Ooh, it actually turned out to be positive, so that's actually interesting. So that point had a pretty big influence on it. So wow, see how tiny of a correlation that one actually was here. Do another simulation. Maybe slightly negative here with that one. It was even stronger than that. And check to see what it is. So again, sometimes this is not as intuitive, which is kind of why it's nice to play around with this some. So you can kind of just go out here, play with some different graphs, and kind of see what correlations really look like. So kind of the more you see it, the more you can do. Um, what's really nice too is like right now I could do this correlation. So let's say I think it's close to that. I'm oh, sorry, negative. But then you can actually play the game of adding a point. So you can actually enter it directly, or it appears after I just learned that you can kind of click and add a point. So I'm going to put a point up there. 
and let's see how that changes our correlation. See, now that's not near as strong. Let's so kind of see what adding a point has. So it's, it's sort of a nice little applet to play around. So again, if you wanted to do that, that's under applets, correlation by I. Right, so the idea of correlation, so it gives us a numerical measure of strength. If we're close to zero, it's a weak relationship. If we're closer to either negative one or positive one, sign doesn't matter when we're talking strength. Sign just has this direction, so whichever one is furthest from zero is the strongest correlation. In class, we're going to talk about another numerical measure to understand how great of a relationship we actually have. But we'll talk about sort of, sort of one of the downfalls about it as well.